Hello, welcome to this quick guide on setting up an ARC dedicated server and playing on it on the same machine, as well as port forwarding and what you need to do if you want to access it over the internet. So first you want to browse to your ARC files. So you right click ARC, go to properties, local files, you browse the local files. Now you want to look for the folder shooter game binaries win64. So in here we want to pretty much kick off shooter.game in a bat file and then we can run a dedicated server that way. So what we want to do is create a text file that will initiate the bat file and run the server for you in the background. This will let you host the server and also play on it. So make sure you're signed to Steam before we do that. Obviously you should be but here we go. So you can make a bat file by right clicking and go and create a new text document. Call it whatever you want. Start server all right, where'd that go? All right, so we open that up. We, I'm going to paste this in, but if you look in the description, you'll see pretty much this text. Paste this in for yourself. I'll also add a few more different um, flags or statements you can add. You see, there's quite a bunch. So if you look at the end of the video, you'll see like them, and you can add them as you wish. So what you want to do is start shootergame.exe, Ragnarok, which is the map name, so your server name, in my case, Arc Server. Your server password, put that in there. Server admin password, put that in there. Max players. Now multi home, this is where you want to put the IP of your computer. If you don't know that, go to your start bar, go to the command prompt and type IP config. And then you get the IP address here 192.168.1.8 in my case. So the port going across here is 27015. That doesn't change, I don't think, but you can change it, but you'll need to make sure you forward the right ports on your router if you need to access it over the net. So I've got a few other fun things at the end here. XP multipliers, just to make it a bit quicker, leveling up, taming speed multipliers times 10, a bit cheaty, and harvest amount multiplier. And that's pretty much it. You paste all that in to a text document, hit file, save as, and then you want to rename this file instead of a dot text format to a dot bat format, which is a batch file. So it kicks off the server, which is shooter dot shooter game server dot exe. Save, close that, and now you should have a start server dot bat. So you can just double click that one, and you get this window pop up. So you might think it's not actually loading because it sits in this for quite a while, but eventually it does say. Your server started in 300 seconds or so, something like that. So I'll just pause it here and I'll come back when it is complete. So after many moons, it finally loads. It actually took about 15, 20 minutes in the end after everything. It got stuck at this primal game data took blah, blah, blah seconds for about, got there in up to 10 minutes and then stood there for about five minutes and then finished loading, that was it. So I'm just going to load it from this shooter game that I haven't actually installed the latest patch. So we'll just open that one. Click on join arc and you'll see your arc server there. And that's it. Make sure you're under LAN game and you'll be done. If you're doing an internet session, of course, change this and you should see it come through. All right, cool. The port forwarding portion of the video. So your server started, it's up and running, you run through, it says it's good to go. So you want to forward some ports on your router. So you want to go to your router, something of that sort, depending on your subnet, like that. 192.168.1.1 or 192.168.1.0, and not 1.0, 0.1. Hit enter, log into that. Depending on your router model, it should be called port forwarding, virtual servers, something of that sort. In my one, it's under WAN and virtual server port forwarding. So the two ports we want to forward are 27015 UDP and 7777 UDP. So I'll give it a name here, 27015 UDP. So the source is going to be Oh, we can leave that blank unless you want to specify 
your public IP address. If you don't have a static IP address, which is an IP address that stays the same, which most likely you don't have unless you pay for that privilege, you leave that blank. The port range is 27015. The local IP is the local IP of the server hosting arc. So in our case, it's 192.168.1.8, which is the IP of this computer. The local port is the same. It's the same port, 27015. The protocol is UDP. So we add that. Stand there. And now we add the second one, which is 7777. UDP, source, blank, port, 7777, local, 192.168.1.8, local port, 7777, and UDP again. Click add. So now your router firewall should be forwarding those ports. So when you look for an internet game, hopefully you'll be able to see it and connect to it. Yeah, and that should be pretty much that for port forwarding. If you find you have issues, you might have to check that no antiviruses are blocking it because it's possible that it's going to prevent it from going out or traffic going in or out. Also, a quick note about saved data. When you start a dedicated server, you will lose all your saved files. I've heard of some people managing to restore them back in and play, but it's most likely not going to work for you. If you want to try it, you can take your Ragnarok saved arcs local and drag them into your saved arcs. You may find that it gets stuck loading certain files and it crashes out, in which case remove those files and just start again. That's where the, you know, the server switches come in handy, XP multipliers and whatnot.